All right, everybody. Welcome to Free was this Free China Pod episode thirty. This is gonna be thirty, even though we've recorded out of order and this is a whole mess. But it doesn't matter because thirty we got to do with Mr. Carl Forehand, my father. He's yeah. here. So I'm here. Back. I'm in the house. Yeah, in the house. Yeah. So we've been talking a little bit off pod, but yeah. Anyway. So yeah, uh, you got the the book coming out soon you, you said june yeah around june 1st it's coming out all right so let because no one knows on our podcast what what i mean you you were on the last one i think you talked a little bit about it but tell everyone what, what is the book about okay yeah basically that i was you know i was raised and um began You know, even as a pastor in a fundamentalist kind of Christian um, environment. Yeah. It talks about, it's called Apparent Faith, What Fatherhood Taught Me About the Father's Heart. So it's how raising my children and really not just raising my children, but the later years, young adult years with with them and talking to them how that influenced and changed my belief system so mm. and is kept probably continuing to to influence that so it's kind of my journey over the last five years of of changing the way i think and you know yeah changing yeah, yeah. so yeah your your your, your evolution into this point and mainly it's mainly about spiritual stuff but it's it's you know a lot of a lot of different stuff just kind of thinking overall yeah and approach to life thinking about god <clears throat> but also about um reflecting on parenthood and raising children and, yeah. and and what all that taught me just about parenthood and, and yeah. about life so uh i hope it's good they're editing the crap out of it. <laughs> it's gonna kill me. That is the thing. Yeah, you're, you're freaked out about that. Well, the thing you should know, uh-huh. if you're ever gonna write a book, the thing you should know is this: that there's there's a possibility that you can get in a groove as an artist, as a uh-huh. you know uh, a creative, where stuff is just flowing out of you. Where it's like mm-hmm. natural, you know, and I suppose yeah, painters yeah. and songwriters and things go through that too. But then there's this like enema type experience of editing a book where it's not comfortable at all. <laughs> where basically they they say this stuff is shit, you know, and, and you got to change this whole thing or it's going to yeah. be terrible. And yeah, yeah. and it makes you feel like what am I even doing writing this? And yeah, why did so, I pour my heart out onto this? These yeah, pages kind and of it's, thing. it's not even going to sound like me anymore. And, um, they just and so that's just the process. So we went through that, and you know, I actually paid a guy quite a bit of money to edit it. Um, yeah, I can't remember if it's like four dollars a page or something like that. You know, Dang, it's, it's a lot of money, and yeah. and then. I mean, I paid him even more than that because he did the content, and then he also paid someone to do the the gra- grammatical, and so on. So, um, yeah, and then just it's painful. Yeah. But you know, in the end, it, it, you look at it; it's better, probably. You know. Yeah. I guess, but and it's readable and it's all congruent. You know, and mm-hmm. the big things they say. Uh, show don't tell you know so I was a preacher for a long time for 20 years yeah. so yeah. It, I'm used to telling not showing so they want you to do illustrations and I I didn't I didn't have that many stories about raising children you know? yeah and so but it forced me to kind of to dig in and look at all that stuff so yeah. it was good in the long run it's good but there's still you know, another edit to it. And yeah. I said, I said, this is not going to be like an epic edit, right? Because it's already been edited. 
And he said, no, it's not going to be that bad. So <clears throat> hopefully. Right, so maybe you're right, yeah. Maybe you're yeah. right. But I'm excited because the guy that's uh, heads up the publishing company that's doing this, that's publishing mm-hmm. it, He's a graphic artist. So I'm excited to see what he comes up with for a cover. You know, those, so those kind of things are exciting. It's just hard to wait. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. So That'd that's be cool. What, yeah, that's what's going on. I'm working. Um, my work is different. You know, I found hourly jobs. I'm used to, you know, for 15 years I had kind of a salary job, mm-hmm. you know, with... Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you're, you're basically working two jobs, being, being a pastor, preacher, whatever name you want to put on it, and then working working at a, you know, a salary yeah. position. Yeah. yeah, so I had kind of a management role as a pastor, you know, and, and also a speaker, and um, kept up with all those things, but then I, yeah. I was a salaried person. Well, now I'm everything almost everything i do is hourly you know so mm. and i'm punching a time clock and um punching a time clock and have a name tag which i haven't had a name yeah. tag <laughs> you know what i mean yeah Car- i got carl on my shirt now and it's all different but it's all good i think in some ways it's kind of earthy and mm-hmm. um like that Mom just came in so she could join us. Hopefully, here in a second. I was gonna say we got a. Uh, Lily said she was, might. She might. I don't know when Lily's gonna get get there, but Lily said she's she's coming to your all's house. So we gotta get the yeah. podcast with her at some point too. I don't know if that's gonna be tonight or tomorrow, but yeah, we never know for sure when she's well, gonna show up. That's kind of how she is, and that's that's her charm, you know. Yeah, that's that's the whatever of Lily. But yeah. So anyway, that's that's kind of what's going on in my life. And then uh, someone has approached me about doing some nutritional coaching. Mm-hmm. It'll be uh huh. It's going to be like a. They're going to provide the education, but they want some follow up with texting messages and coaching services and and so okay. on. So they kind of approached me about that. So. Yeah, I was gonna say if anyone he to do coaching stuff and hit hit my dad up, but um, because I know Ar- like Ari, I don't know if if you listen. Oh well, I guess I haven't posted that one yet. So there's a a podcast that we recorded before this that's gonna be episode thirty one, um, because mm. we have to do all the the tens as you because right. that's just it's the rule now. It's the thing. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's the thing. But uh, he. He's he went full vegan now, so he was he's been really yeah he's been vegetarian for good long longer than you've been vegan like probably a good five ten I, I I actually couldn't tell you how long but he's been yeah. he's been vegetarian for a while and he just one of our other buddies decided to go vegan as well and so they kind of just did like a pack together and so yeah. on the last podcast he's all like pushing pushing me to go total vegan and. It, it inspired me a little bit. Like I've been, <clears throat> I definitely I, by no by no means even I'm not by no means even vegan right now. But I've definitely tried to cut out like eat like uh, middle meals and stuff. Like I've been eating like you know basically like 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 today I was like eating like like I have the only thing I have in my house right now is is fruits and vegetables. So. Mm-hmm. Trying to trying to get to that, get closer closer to that sort of thing. But anyway, so that was that was a very uh, an interesting turn that, that uh, he he took quite uh, quickly. And uh, yeah, I was yeah. like I like turned him on to some of the some of the like groups and stuff that you're you're in yeah. or slash like you know kind of running and so that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So you can get a hold of some gluten. You can make you some meat substitutes. Huh? I think it helps I, me a lot. Yeah, it would help. I think that would help me as well. And but the thing is, is I don't have a kitchen. Like I live in a studio apartment, and I, mm. you know, it's 
So, but I, I'm thinking about getting like a hot plate. I have like a, I have a uh, a wok basically, and um, so maybe that would help me. So I'm thinking about doing that sort of thing. I'm I'm working mm-hmm. on like moving that way. But um, for him, like, uh, he's he's moving places right now, so it's like in between. It like kind of depends on like what kind of place he gets. But um, I don't think he he like kind of is like doesn't really need meat substitutes. Like he's been vegan so long that like he's. Like when I go to his house, um, we visited. I visited him like two or three weeks ago. And basically, like he just cooks. Like he cooks like uh, the the you know the how to say that like the onion pancake that we had when you were here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he cooks. He'll cook like that, and then he'll just like basically, like like basically take a bunch of fresh fruits and vegetables and pour pour mm. a little. Virgin olive oil and some sriracha sauce on them, and we'll just eat that. That's yeah. basically what, kind of what happens. So those sounded like a lot of things that don't go together. <laughs> He's <clears throat> he he uh, yeah. I was like like when he when we were eating together. I was like, oh, why are you putting oil on this stuff? And whatever. <laughs> but he, he eats a lot healthier than I do. So I, yeah, I can't I can't hate on him too much. But he's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think the meat the meat substitute thing is like not a big deal for him, but uh, I think that would that would help me a lot. I just got to figure out how to how to make the the satan and all that all that business. Yeah, but but I mean, aside from that, in our early days when we probably did better it was just taking potatoes or rice mm. and adding stuff to it and and just making it how you want it. Yeah. And then every once in a while you make some stew, mm-hmm. you know, which is just potatoes and vegetables and broth, you know. Yeah. And you can make your own broth if you want to. So there's a lot of simple ways to do it. But Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a it's just about figuring out what works for you, I guess. I mean and uh I don't know, I've been working on just I don't know, just eating eating healthier and stuff like that and uh, lately I've been at least like in terms of like snacks and things like that I've been trying to cut out everything that's I like won't eat meat for snacks and things like that so I'm trying to work work in that direction and see where see where everything goes I guess but yeah yeah I don't know it's it's a slow slow thing for me and it's a little bit difficult but uh I don't know it's good I'm getting definitely eating more healthy like right now I mean like uh I got like a bag of oranges and some. I have a fruit that I I need to post the fruit in your group, one of your groups, because I don't know what the fruit that I bought was, and I think maybe someone might be able to identify it. But um, yeah, it's okay. A, yeah, I have some weird fruit that I bought at the fruit market, and uh, yeah, I mean right now I have like a bag of, like I have a box of tomatoes that I'm eating on right now, and that's that's been a big deal. Yeah. You like tomatoes? <clears throat> yeah, like I mean, the uh, the markets like there's a market. So I work in this place called Longhan, and um, I work there like four days a week. And they they have like a tradition, what we would call like a traditional market. It's like a like a marketplace, and a bunch of fruit vendors and, and well, fruit and vegetable vendors, I guess, and go there all the time and buy fruit and tomatoes are like a big thing they're like basically at every place so i buy a lot of tomatoes um like cherry tomatoes and so yeah basically that's like kind of my like snack on food and yeah and i i mean i like i eat on apples and i have oranges and tangerines and all like you know pears and all that stuff but the big main fruit that's like easy to get is like those so i i eat a lot of cherry tomatoes and uh, cucumbers are like the big two main main ones yeah. I eat on. You got to get your greens in somehow. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I want I worry a little bit about tomatoes because they're not very green, you know. So I yeah. I yeah I I was like trying to figure out a way to get the green like the green stuff in, make sure I get all my like vitamins and stuff. So I I try to eat cucumbers, but I don't I. I need to like do more research on uh you know what sorts of like uh, I guess like vitamins and stuff and like uh, nutrition facts are are in, in included in those things. Yeah, some people just use um, 
you know, spinach or lettuce or all the greens is just like a wrap, you know, or eat them raw. And, but I I mostly get mine in and smoothies. So yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about buying a blender for that purpose. Actually, is just it's like all right. Mm-hmm. Well, I should that that's like an easy way to get it all in. Even if I, because yeah, like I've thought about like oh well, I could just buy like a you know some some spinach or some whatever you know some some sort of like head of greens or whatever and just like scarf it down but if i just blended it up i wouldn't even taste it you know yeah that's how we always got or at least i did always got my i'd find out something's good you know like flaxseed meal and what do you you know what else are you going to do with that other than just drop it in a smoothie yeah exactly but so anyway mom's joined the conversation here she's been quiet up to now just hey, listening to your voice Hello. and smiling. <laughs> That's all I need to do. And uh, well, I don't know. I think it's it's better if you join the <laughs> podcast. But we we appreciate you just being present. I just like listening. So, but I might pipe in every now and then. She's a submissive wife like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to put this on mute for a while while I throw a few punches. <laughs> <Blunt and That's laughs> right. I was going to say, if you, need, if you need to beat up on him, just let me know. I'll mute the podcast. Just we can take mute a little, it. We, can, we yeah. can take a little commercial break or something. For our sponsors, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, wish. I wish I was getting paid for this. Oh, yeah. Um, that'd be nice. Well, I, so speaking to Ma joining the podcast, I was I'm, I have, I finished, I guess, basically. I need to edit. I need to like go back through and edit it, but... um. <clears throat> last time we talked about you coming on the podcast mom is like uh you were saying like doing like the talk like talking about like the teacher strikes and stuff and like I right wrote it, i basically like wrote an article about that so i haven't posted it yet but uh at some point i i, I will post it i just have to like re- 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 reread it and make sure it's like co- like cogent i guess and, right uh, but yeah but like i wrote i wrote an article about that so Maybe I'll send I'll send it to you, or maybe I'll just post it and like. Yeah, if you like post it, I'll it read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I'd, I'd but, like to read that for sure. But yeah, I, I I don't know. I just think it's like that sort of stuff is like mm, quite Im- important. It's like I'm I'm pretty f- I don't know. Like when I was reading through that, I was just like, man, like getting like a little bit visceral about like, like this is it's ridiculous like what's going on and like i know like i guess it was lily i guess that posted something today on facebook about betsy devos and it's just like yeah our education system is so oh my god so ridiculous right now yeah yeah yep it is i haven't even like really read that much about it but they're i mean i've got some teacher friends that are they are really upset right now with what she's doing so yeah, well, she's, she's basically mm-hmm. trying to get the the special olympics and some of those kind of programs mm-hmm. and yeah i mean and even before that like i mean she's just like inherently like she has so many friends like one one her brother is like a a, a private military contractor who's like a, mm-hmm. he's like a evil like evil literally mm-hmm. evil guy like mm-hmm. if you want to read anything about him you can go over to intercept like the intercept.com mm-hmm. and read about him he's like like some of the worst atrocities that we've committed in like the middle east basically is like we've wow. paid paid him to do that um but aside from that like yeah she's completely in fa- she's like basically propping up like this for-profit education system which does things like basically says like uh f- for instance like they they have these like like devry and things like that basically like uh th- like there's there's instances of like these <clears throat> excuse me these companies that like uh, basically are like oh we'll like you know we'll train you to be a chef and they'll be like we have 90 percent graduation rates and like employment rates and like mm. it's like oh well like 90 percent of our graduates find gainful employment it's like well what does gainful employment mean and they're right. like well it means you work at mcdonald's like basically right. like yeah. you're a sh- you're a chef but like basically right. you you flip burgers at mcdonald's mm-hmm. and it's just like this is a complete joke like it's, it's, it's absolutely absurd and and the fact that like she's been put in the position that she is is, is mind-boggling but yeah from what i 
from what I read and heard before she was even in that position was she has like no position, no, I mean, she doesn't really even have the qualifications to be in that position. Not at all. But that's the thing is that's what's happened with a lot of the Trump appointees is none of yeah. these people have. The only reason that they are put, put in these positions is either A, because they have money or B, because they're Trump sycophants. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you look at the the AG that he has right in right now is like you know, the only reason he's there is because he ex- explicitly con- like basically came out and said, like, I'm a, a Trump fan. Like, if the Mueller report comes out, like, I'll like rule in your favor. And so it's just like it's it's not no one in their position almost at all. I, I don't know if I, anyone can argue for any of these positions. Yeah, it's like in their position because of their qualifications. Yeah, exactly. It's, right. it's because of it's because of their position rather mm. than their qualifications. Yeah, it's, it's absurd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It Me- is. Meanwhile, we meanwhile we have failing schools. Like, yep. I mean, Flint, Michigan hasn't had clean water in years. I mean, it's baffling. The richest country on the face of the earth is has 30, 30 to forty thousand people without health care right now. And yep. Yeah. It's it's absurd. It's I, I don't know. It makes me like furious. At the same time, is it just like. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say about it. I just I feel like so much of all this kind of conspires against, like, just the general public. I don't know. Maybe it's out there and I just don't know. But it just seems like it's all working together to keep keep so much of it, like, out of the public spotlight so that, so that we don't really know the truth. But from what I've heard from your podcast is there are ways to find and get to the truth. I think that falls more on things like mainstream media. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. look at the recent thing that came out, like the the Mueller report that came out. Like, right. uh, basically exonerated Trump on the Russia front. Mm-hmm. Which, if you if you would have asked me two year, you know, two years ago when Trump got elected, like, uh, maybe I would have had like a little bit of an opinion about like whether Trump colluded with Russia, but like. I, I don't I, even from the beginning I I didn't think that that was the main thing. If you want to get Trump, you get him on like uh, the like numerous like problems that he has with like his businesses. Like he he's mm-hmm. the enumeration clause. Like <clears throat> he has numerous problems that you can get him on that are clear, obvious violations that he's like flagrantly flagrantly violating the law. But instead you have people like Rachel Maddow on MSNBC just every day going out and saying Russia 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 and it's it it's obfuscating from the point like these are not these are not the issues that we need to be focusing on right Russia that's is what not I'm, the issue that's what I'm saying and yeah yeah exactly so that's yeah it, it, this is not what we should be focusing on and but instead when you if you watch MSNBC CNN and of course Fox News Fox News is trash but like MSNBC has proved to be not very great either. Like they've mm. not done a good job of like holding the po- like powerful accountable, and that's what news media should be: is holding powerful p- the powerful accountable. They should right. say, "Oh, you're a rich person." Well, but the problem is, is that the people that are these mainstream pundits are also rich and powerful now. They get that's paid millions I, yeah. of dollars to read to read a read a, a prompter, a teleprompter. Right. So. What are you going to do? Like these people are all in bed together, so you have to. Right. Uh, that's that's what I would stress to people is, stop paying attention to mainstream news. Stop watching television. I mean, if you want to watch a, a TV show that you think is interesting, that's fine. But don't watch news on TV unless yeah. you're going to be very very careful and everything that they say you're going to be like, is this true or not? But if you're going to just watch it and say like, oh, I trust them. Don't you shouldn't trust them at all. Right. So, but, yeah. like, you know, probably two, gosh, I don't know, maybe three years ago now, I, like, just quit watching, you know, Fox News is what I used to watch all the time. I'm sure you're, you remember that. But I used to watch yeah, yeah, it yeah. all the time. And, uh, but about, you know, two, three years ago, it was like, I just, I can't, I can't stomach this anymore. And, you know, they were fair and balanced. And I'm like, this doesn't seem fair and balanced to me at all. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, exactly. but, but then I think someone like me kind of goes the other to the other extreme. And I won't say that I bury my head in the sand, but it's like, 
I don't want to be inundated with all the um, the the negative and you know the the scare tactics of um, the news media. So where where do you go? Where's the best place to go to get information that is not going to be for a plan eater? Well, you know, I'm not. I'm talking about like you know <laughs> news <laughs> information. Pearl's coaching. Oh my gosh. Pearl's coaching and four eyed plan eater. It's all you need to know. Plugs, mad yeah. plugs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, back to my series so what question. So what you kind of said a minute uh-huh. ago, um, you know, what are you really going to get him on? I think during when they interviewed his attorney, you know, the other day, you remember that? Are you talking about Cohen? Yeah, when they interviewed yeah. Cohen, at the end, um, what's her face, the new young congressperson? AOC? Yeah, I think, so. I think so. Yeah, there's a few think of them. The question she asked right at the end, she said, okay, let me let me clarify. He exaggerated his income for things like um, who's the richest person in the world. Yeah. And then he devalued things when reporting to the government, right? Yep. And yep. Cohen said, yep. And she said, Okay, you know, basically that was the conversation because they said what she's setting that up Mm -hmm. for is how you get mobsters and people like that is eventually just get them on tax evasion. Yeah, that's that's, right. That's probably how it'll go down. Um, Yeah, it's it's, what I would what I would say to everyone is if you're worried about are are you playing me through the speaker right now? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I can hear my voice for some reason. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to talk quieter. I think I'm talking too loud. Anyway, <laughs> what I would say to people is if you are are worried about Trump, I think your point is exactly right, is that if um, the way that he will be taken down is in 2020, when if he doesn't win re-election, he will go to jail because the New York circuit court will take him down basically like they have they're they're like doing things about him right now but the the issue right now is a lot of people are saying like oh you know we should impeach him which i i think yeah of course he should be impeached but the issue is right now is the republican party is totally disingenuous and they don't represent you so if you support the republican party you're fooling yourself but they're not gonna. They're not gonna support impeachment. Almost, I, I think, almost no matter what. Like you could, he like literally, like he said, like I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and 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 get away with it. And I think that's actually absolutely right. Like in, unless he actually did that, he probably would not get indicted. And there's a very big question about whether you can indict a sitting president. And I don't actually think you can. A lot of legal scholars say basically you can't indict a sitting president. Yeah. So if you if you can't do that. Basically, if he doesn't win re-election, which uh, he could, he could, he could. That's the thing. Is yeah. well, I didn't think he, he would be elected. You know. Yeah, exactly. Two thousand sixteen. Exactly. People need to be very, very careful, and this is what I caution people about a lot: is is everyone says, "Oh, there's no way, there's no way," and I said, "What did you say in two thousand sixteen? Did mm, you say there's exactly. no way? Yes, you did. Exactly. So you have mm-hmm. to, you have to go out and vote. That is what it ends up being: is you have to go out and vote, and you have to you have to make your voice heard, and that that extends to you need to go out and like email your congressman and say like your congressperson, mm. and say, I, I don't support this person, and, like, if you're going to vote against Medicare for All or, like, you know, whatever the policy is, like, you need to be in, in contact with your congressperson and let them know what you think because otherwise the only thing that they're hearing is this money because that's what they all they that's what they all get. Like, look at, uh, like, your guys' state, like, Missouri, Claire McCaskill got mm-hmm. voted out because right. she was like I'm I'm a centrist, you know, I'm a I'm a Republican light, like Republican light and like it doesn't win. Like those things don't win because we like look at Missouri increased the minimum wage, basically legal, like decriminalized marijuana and the Democrat got voted out. And that's those those are the things that the Democrat should be pushing, but she wasn't because she wanted to be uh, safe. Like I want to be the safe candidate. So yeah. Yeah. you need to put you need to push those people and say, 
yeah, uh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm in favor of these things. Yeah, I want to I want to have a good a, a good like system like a medical system. Like this is mm. ridiculous. The the system that we living that we're living in is ridiculous. Right. The the medical system in in the U S is the number one reason that I will never ever ever move back to the U S. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's absurd. It's it's stupid. I don't I don't understand how anyone is okay living with that. Like I mean I I lived under it for a while and then when I got when I got here like it's like if I would have like I broke my collarbone in three places when I mm. had a motorcycle accident. If I would have done that in the U.S., it would have cost me probably one hundred times more money. Yeah, than it you'd cost probably me still be paying US. it off. Oh, absolutely, and I'm still paying off the the ridiculous educational expenses yep. that I, that, you know, which is also stupid. Like, there's mm-hmm. a trillion dollars of educational debt in the U.S., which you can't default on. If you declare for bankruptcy, it's literally the only debt that you can't default on in the U.S. is is uh, co- college debt, which right. also is ridiculous. But the fact, like, if I would have gone to the, if I just went to the doctor in the U.S., to get a checkup, it would cost me about the same amount of money as it took me to take a ambulance ride, to mm-hmm. have surgery, invasive surgery, to put a piece of metal in my collarbone. Like that's stupid. It's yeah. it's stupid. Anyone that thinks that that's not like the dumbest thing that they've ever heard is is fooling themselves. I think just a lot of people don't know that there's something different out there. I mean, some people do know, but you know, like before. You moved to Taiwan and that mm-hmm. happened to you. I had no idea what that type of healthcare system was even all about or that it really even existed. Of course, you know, you hear so much about, you know, socialists and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I don't well, know. That's, yeah, that's the, that's the issue that a lot of people have uh, run into is like, the, like, one, almost no one on mainstream, the mainstream pundits can define socialism or communism. They mm-hmm. don't know what that means. None of those right. people know what that means. And the average person also can't define what that you're, means. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> and that's, that's I, a big problem. I probably pro- couldn't define it. I yeah, mean- exactly. And that's, and that's a big problem. And for you as an average person, that's not a big deal. But that, think about the fact that like you, the fact that you can't define it is because of the fact that like – People smear people like they smear people at, like Bernie yeah. Sanders. Like calling Bernie Sanders a socialist is, if if you're a person on mainstream media that calls Bernie Sanders a socialist, you should lose your job. Mm. Absolutely, and, like because that's that's a malpractice. Yeah, it, it's not socialism. Like you right. you clearly don't understand basic political terms, and if you don't understand basic political terms, then you shouldn't be a pundit. I'm not I'm not saying that like you should be like. You know, you, you shouldn't be guillotined in the street, but you should. If you're calling yourself like a media, a media, you're like, oh, I'm I'm a well informed like media person, like, and you can't define socialism, like, you 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 probably shouldn't have that job. That's not the right. job for you. Yeah, and and if you're not, yeah, if you're gonna smear him as, as a socialist, even though you could like. I most I would consider myself a socialist, but if you're going to smear someone as a socialist and you can't even define the term, <laughs> I don't know. That that seems a clear a, cl- a clear thing to me. That it's just like okay, you should not have your job. But anyway, so, go ahead. So what? So how would you define a socialist? So if you if you say you if you say you would define yourself as one, how would you define that? And I'm asking for like my personal educational purposes. Mm-hmm. I would say in general, sorry, I'm eating right now because mm, I'm hungry. Fine. I would say in general, actually, like to give myself like a, a clear definition, I would not. Um, I would consider myself like a, in, in favor of like every other marketplace in the in the the whole world is like I would consider myself a mixed mar- a mixed market economist. Okay. So I'd say like in some ways I would I would and be in favor of like socialist ideas. Um, so basically the, di- the difference is like, and, and, and Bernie Sanders is also like a little bit at fault, um, for some of these things because he, he, he calls himself a democratic socialist, but actually what he is is a social, social democrat. Okay. So basically if you're a socialist, you would be in favor of the, the proletariat, like the, basically the people taking over the, the means of production. Mm-hmm. So people should have 
in, in every company, the people that work there should have control of that company, basically, to, I, I, uh, to give it like a, a, a very basic uh, explanation. Um, so it, being leaning socialist, I would say a lean socialist, but I'm, in, I'm definitely in favor of a mixed economy because that's how almost every economy works. So I, I'm in favor of capitalism in some instances. So where, mm-hmm. where does capitalism work? Uh, sneakers. You want to make sneakers? Socialism. Or, or capitalism. Yeah, capitalism works. Uh, cars, in most cases, capitalism. But you have to have regulations on those things. So, uh, for instance, like carbon outputs. Uh, so th- th- those would be the socialist controls. Healthcare, okay. you need to have a complete con- government control of that. Because what is a corporation? For instance, like people, people call corporations on, on the right, they call them like they're basically the saviors of, of the economy. And on the left, um, a lot of people call them like evil. But mm-hmm. the, the, the reality is, is, is corporations are not moral and they're not evil. They're amoral. Right. The, 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 the idea of a corporation basically is to make as much money as possible. Right. And that's what they do. And so that's why you need to regulate them. So when when Trump says things like, uh, "For every one regulation that we pass, we're going to deregulate two, we're going to get rid of two regulations," the reason that, that is a huge problem is because we're that's exacerbating climate change. It's exacerbating problems like uh, like healthcare and things like that. Like it, it, it's clearly a problem. Um, so we we need to address those things. And yeah, so there are things that I would say should be socially controlled and i think healthcare is definitely one of those things and there are a number of other things that i think that should be controlled by by the society at large um i mean in general like look at uh look at prescription drugs mm-hmm. most of them in the us are created by um in colleges which are publicly funded right and so they they're created and then basically what they do is a, a private corporation buys up that patent for the drug and then makes a ton of money and jacks up the price on it. Right. And so people are paying hundreds of dollars for their insulin or they're not paying or they're, or the, yeah. they're, ration, they're rationing their insulin and they're dying. Yeah. Like people are yeah. literally dying. 40, 30 to 40,000 people die every year because there is the lack health care in the U.S. That I know. Does not, yeah. That does not happen in any other country. It does well, not and happen that's, you know, and then but. we have programs like, you know, when you guys were younger that I worked for, you know, in Nebraska, um, yep. you know, Every Woman Matters, which got women who were of lower or no income and for their well women checks. And, you know, so we've got programs like that, which are great, but it's like y- you have to be, you know. Well, Otherwise, we're cutting, well, be- we're cutting benefits yeah. for those. We're cutting benefits for uh, yes. those, those things. Right. I mean, look well, at look at look at Trump and and look at the Republican Party. They're saying, "Oh, these people are lazy." Blah 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 blah. Whatever whatever excuse they want to make for those things, they're cutting these programs right now. And the latest budget that that Trump is talking about is cutting education spending. It's cutting healthcare spending. It's cutting a number of these things. And. Ma- mainstream media again to go back to that point is not covering it they're not saying w- what they should be doing is saying go out in the street and protest right now mm. because that's what you need to do because this is literally people are going to die yeah because of these policies that the trump administration but instead they go russia 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 and that is why people are tuning out of these things because they know that Roach- rachel matta how has spent However many hours, basically 60 percent of her programming, basically saying like, "Oh, this Russia Gate thing," and it's just like that is not the issue at hand. The right. issue at hand is the fact that like people are people are dying. There's forty thousand homeless veterans in the U.S. You want to talk mm-hmm. about hold the Republican Party c- accountable? You want to go out and talk about how the Republican Party is bullshit? Yeah, I'm on board with you. But if you're gonna say, "Oh, it's because they're in bread with Russia," that's that's garbage. But if you right. want to say, you go out there and you say, "Oh, you're in favor of like the military. You want to start all these illegal wars that you're starting," and and at the same time, you want to just not give benefits to, to the people that come back home. These these forty thousand people basically that come back home and they they come back to the U.S. and you're like, "Oh, you're a war hero. Good for you." And at the same time, they're living on the street. Right, you're not going right. to give them health care. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's no, absurd. I know it's 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 ridiculous. And you know, and I think that's part of the reason why you know, getting back to my original question, that I don't 
like I need to know where to go to get proper information on things so I feel like I number one have a voice number two can do something about some of these things because I just feel like what's going on does not line up with like where um, where, where I am you know as a as a person I just feel like how can we yeah. I, I, do, I don't know I feel like as a as a nation we're like speaking out of both sides of our mouth you know it's like um, like you were just that, saying. Yeah. So I have a new topic. When no, you get we're not done on this one yet. That's that's <laughs> one issue. That's one issue though with democracy is that you 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 in in a lot of instances speak out of both sides of your mouth, which is um, why why it is very complicated. Which again, I am in favor of democracy. I think that we should have democracy. If you look at the statistics, oftentimes the U.S. Ap- actually operates as an oligarchy, so it's it's not exactly a democracy, so people that call the U.S. a democracy, in some ways they're actually incorrect. But um, I, w- I would fight for democracy in every sense, and I would say everyone should go out and vote. And the more the, the reason that we that it operates like an oligarchy is because we have 40% voter turnout. Like, we have mm-hmm. 40% of people. Uh, everyone wants to have their opinion, but when it comes to voting, 40% of people turn out, or f- right. 40 to 50%. It's, yeah. it, it, it's silly. But, yeah, I mean, uh, I can give you a lot of places where you can get like decent media um what i would suggest is like you you do like read print journalism um mm-hmm. print journalism is like pretty decent um so as much as like i have problems with them like uh, just things ask like the, me i'll tell you because i'm the man <laughs> i would mm. i don't i don't know if that's where i'd go for my information mm. but it, it, maybe maybe it depends so yeah i, I would just the the thing i would stress is like if you have like an issue that you want to research just research it like we have google like and 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 the thing is is don't stop at one source so if you look at the new york times like um i think the new york times is a lot of good journalism they've done very brilliant things um regarding the trump camp uh the the trump administration but at the same time they have a lot of like things that are just silly and it's just like when you read it i'm just like no this is either it's it's maybe it's technically correct but the the opinion of the person writing is is silly so right. you have to find a lot of sources um there are things on youtube I, I i i can talk to you about a lot of sources on youtube that i listen to like uh secular talk majority report things like that um if you want to I'll, I'll send you a bunch of links okay. later but um even even those like I, I listen to those like basically every day like when I'm co- doing my commute but at the same time you still have to even those who I mostly agree with like there are times like you have to fact check them and be like ah you know like they're you're you, you don't have the full picture here type of right thing. I think the I think and I've heard you say this in other podcasts before is that I think the thing I need to just remember is like I've got a brain and I need to critically think. So if there's something that seems sketchy, I need to just, you know, not just turn it off or not just blindly follow, but look into it more. Find like you said, find some more resources. There's a lot to be said for Mm-hmm. You know, the question we have is where where do I get good information? Mm. But the but just what mom just said is the thing you've got to got to realize more than anything is what does your gut tell you, and what 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 do you get when you think through this? You know, and then mm-hmm. match that up with how life really works and how. Yeah, uh, life plays out, and how you feel after you act like that, or how do you mm-hmm. feel after you run your life like that, and you've got to. All of those things have to factor together. There's, you know, everybody, yeah. everybody, even the good sources have their own, have their agenda. Sure. And wherever they start affects where they end up. Mm-hmm. So. So even a good source, even someone you consider a good source, they started with an with an, an opinion, and they ended up somewhere close to that. So yeah, um, you've got to think through things. What is you know what is the best philosophy for life? What's the best uh, way to approach it? And logically, what you know, it's not all logic, but what does your heart tell you? You know, and, and I think that's a lot. I have a new subject though. I don't, <laughs> 
you guys could go on forever on one subject. We, we could. Bef- before we'll, you, have before to do, you, we'll have to do our own podcast. Yeah, we should, we should do our own podcast. And, bef- and before you <laughs> before you end on, before you switch subjects, I would just before say. Before I shut you it, down. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Well, exactly. you're not going to shut, you're not going to shut me down. You're just going to switch subjects. So you're not, <laughs> you're not actually responding to my point, which would be my point. <laughs> anyway, I, I would just say in terms of, yeah, I would, ag- I would agree with you that, yeah, you need, you, you. Trust your gut in a lot of senses, but you should also you should also check your gut. So is is my yeah. gut correct? Because a right. lot of times, like I want to, I want if if we're speaking, uh, you know, uh, in in general, like yeah, I would love if the RussiaGate thing was true because it would take down Trump. But it's just not. It's just not. So mm. you need to you need to also check yourself and say, yeah, this is what I feel, and like this seems like it could be legit. But you need to you need to even check that, and you need to go against those sorts of things, and you need to always look for as much information as you can on the subject, and that includes checking your gut, it includes checking the sources that you agree with, the sources that you disagree with, and it includes mm-hmm. just doing like a, a deep dive into a lot of these things. And so you have to you have to really do research in that. I I understand why a lot of people can't do that because th- it it costs a lot of time. To do these things, to to I do a most, deep dive research. Most things are based on fear, and and those most opinions are based on what do my friends think, and what will they think if I think something different. So, yeah, um, I, 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 a yeah. lot of what we believe, what we think, what we mm-hmm. what we're going to follow on, you know, what's it going to cost me to believe something different? I, yeah, more than. Almost anything that that's the influencing factors and yeah I would I would, I would say if you, you if you look at if you look at sociological uh, psychological sorry if you look at psychological studies based on especially uh, upon the right uh, right wing of America the second highest factor is fear mm. um, yes so uh, originally what I thought was the highest was was fear but actually this, the second highest is fear the first is actually disgust so. Mm. What what you find is which is correlate like not, I wouldn't say correlated but it's related to fear it's just things like uh, you're disgusted by the fact that like um, like you have like people like Tucker Carlson on 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 Fox News like saying like the browning of America and like uh, they're dirtying up these populations and you have people like uh, Steve King uh, who's a senator like basically saying like we can't replace our population with um, other people's babies and like things like that See, that's like, that's measuring your heart that's when you hear something mm-hmm. like that, you know, if you truly trust in your heart instead of worrying about what your friends will think, yeah. then, then you go, your heart's going to say, that's, that's not quite right. There's something yeah. wrong with that. There's yeah. something well, off about that. Unless, yeah. unless, you know, fear has, has edged out disgust and fear what has, I, what fear I would, has told what I would, you that, mm-hmm. that, that if my friends make fun of me, that would be the worst thing ever. That's worse yeah, what I, than what I would say is that most discomfort. people most people fall into that yeah. camp though is that they they're too scared yeah I but know. I would yeah I would agree with you I agree with you okay now, now let me talk about this then so okay. yesterday you might have seen on my Facebook I posted a picture where I work at Lowe's the hardware store big box hardware store and there's a sign on the door I just noticed it when I was waiting to get in in mm-hmm. the morning it says we cannot sell trailers on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sorry for that. the inconvenience. You see that? I saw so, it. So apparently, I guess that's a blue law, right? Yeah. So in your great wisdom, figure that out for me. So Why a trailer? Why a trailer? Why can't you buy, you know, is that, are we continuing the Pharisee tradition of, you know, can't heal someone on Sunday? I mean, a lot of those are blue laws, right? I mean, I get the whole, you know, alcohol thing. That was a big thing in in Texas. I don't, I don't think it is here. I don't know, but you know, I remember growing or when we lived in Texas, you couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like it, nobody would sell alcohol, even in the grocery stores, on Sunday. But, yeah. but a trailer seems kind of yeah. And you weird. take a, a store like that that sells. You know, maybe eighty thousand dollars a day mm-hmm. of products. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Tra- trailers. How does that? 
What I would say is 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 that it's it is blue laws and it's this idea of of the yeah it's, it, it's long standing of just just like this idea that like oh we're like uh, the puritanical society and you know this is just kind of like what we do and I would say none of that none of that should be continued all of that should be abolished because you know what I what I think it was mm-hmm. I think it was. Um, some little old lady in that community that Mm -hmm. someone bought a trailer and did something with it and that was bad and that was the worst thing in the world and she spent enough time at City Hall going something's got to be done (laughs) just like they do when they come into church meetings something's got to be done until it was done Mm -hmm. and then for whatever hokey reason that's on the on the books, and we just don't have time to get rid of it. It's just, it seems silly. Yeah, you know? it, I mean, it absolutely is silly. It's silly, but that's but the thing: is all these, all, all of these things. else in that hardware store, mm-hmm. except the trailer. You know. Yeah. You could sell lumber. You know. People yeah, you could, could build you could build a trailer with the lumber that you, yeah, you, that you bought from there. It's, it's you absurd. could probably buy all the materials to build a trailer in the just can't buy store. one. You can't buy you, one hundred percent. You one hundred percent could, but that's the thing is that's that's it why take it longer is to absurd. build it than it would to buy it though. I mean, you, but yeah, you but that's why get to church. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's all absurd though. It's it's stupid. It's it, yeah maybe I don't know I don't know if it's it's some old lady or if it's just like. These are the old blue laws that we have, but all those blue laws should be abolished because the, it, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, don't we have so separation be- of church and state? Isn't there a separation of church and state? So yeah. these people, you have these people in in Congress, especially on the right wing, they say, "Oh, Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law." But we have this right now is in a lot of places like Oklahoma voted against Sharia law as if any Muslim people live there. It's a joke. <laughs> So, but, but, but like, but we, don't, we like what we have Christian Sharia in a lot of places. It's a joke. So, but like, so you got to give some credit because mm-hmm. when, um, and I know you won't, but <laughs> because <not>. um, <laughs> oh my sometimes, gosh. um, I mean, that's that's for some of the, I would not necessarily say Republican, the conservative. Uh, wings Mm -hmm. that's that's in in some ways their root motivation you know is they say we've got to get rid of all this government control government Mm -hmm. regulations and government everything and so that's that's sometimes how they go down the why they go down the roads they go Uh, some of it's out of ignorance you know like you said Trump Uh wants to he wants to get rid of all the EPA stuff all, all the progress that's been made it's you basically know, sees, because obama did that. it wow yeah he says he sees that as excessive uh, i i don't think stuff. it's i don't even i think you're giving him too much credit i think he sees it as obama did it so i'm gonna undo it right well what whatever i mean I, like yeah, i said yeah, yeah. it's mostly for him out of ignorance mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. what to tackle but i'm, I'm saying the root the root motivation is is maybe good because it's the same thing that for me that says says why can't I buy a trailer or even alcohol or a car on Sunday if that dealership wants to be open? Um, you know why do we have that stupid mm-hmm. law? Right? It's just excessive and and how are you going to enforce it and all that kind of stuff. But I think um, the I, I, I guess that's what I wish. I wish that all the sides could could see the root motivation. I think if they could, then they would. They might find a way home. They might find a way to to navigate all mm-hmm. these things. Uh, they see we we still kind of all have the same same root motivations. You know, we want peace. We want um, less. But, I mean, everybody wants less, less rules and government, and so on. We do want more health care, you know. We want we want better schools and, mm-hmm. and things like that. 
Yeah, um, I, I, but, I think that's too, I think that's too broad, though. I mean, yeah, I get I get that sentiment, but when you're talking about so it, it depends on what policy you're talking about. So if you're talking about schools, you have to have more regulation, because if you deregulate the schools, look at Detroit schools, look at inner city schools in St. Louis. They have fungus growing out of the walls. Like, I'll post the article that I posted. Like, they they have no funding. And when you deregulate them more and more, it's the same thing that dis, that Betsy DeVos is doing right now. She's deregulating these things. And yeah, but, what but it, what gotta, a result? What it results go in is mm-hmm. you got to go back to the you know the common ground. It will never get anywhere if we don't find common ground. So what is? What is the common? Just like if you if you yeah. try to have a discussion between a Christian and a Muslim, you, you're never going to get anywhere going. You're, you know, that way of doing it stupid, and so well, so is your way of doing it stupid. Um, you you got to go back and say, well, what are the things we have in common? What are the, what are our common goals? What do we both want to accomplish? And can we find a compromise? Because it's mm-hmm. always going to be a compromise. Yeah, it's, it's th- never going to be idealistic. And, I think the you know, issue I've that I think the issue time. that you're running into though is is thinking that Republicans are going to compromise. They're not. Well, the, the Republican I don't Party think will never. Side is. <laughs> I don't think well, the side the is. Democratic Party has compromised again and again, and I I would I would say that they're stupid for doing that. I mean, look at look at Obamacare. You, you quote unquote Obamacare. The 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 that it's like basically like. When you look at Obamacare, it, it is literally a Republican plan. You know how many Republicans voted for that? It was literally a Romney plan. R- Romney was in favor of it. it. It was a right-wing heritage foundation plan. You know how many Republicans voted in favor of that? Zero. So yeah. it, 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 it's a joke to say that, like, the, it, like, yeah, if you talk about people on the ground, yeah, people people are rational – to, uh, I don't I don't even know if I would say people are rational, but people are more rational. The normal people on the ground are more rational than like yeah. a, 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 but that's, an elected that's where official. The agreement and, that's where the agreement and compromise has to start. You, you don't start anything. I, you know, I finally unfriended my politician friend. Um, finally. Yeah, <laughs> I've only been encouraging him to do that for a while. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, this is me on Facebook. Uh, Delete. <laughs> but, it, but he 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 couldn't even you know keep from saying negative things about my the way I eat. Yeah. You know, and he couldn't even retract that or say he was sorry or you know yeah. there's no compromise there. And when when I tried to talk to him about gun control, yeah. you know, he's so pro Second Amendment and committed to that, and and people paying money, you know, to you know, yeah. I, I, I hate to bring it to you. I hate to, I hate to bring it to you, but like most of the right wing people, even even the right wing punditry and and the right wing base is going to be very against that. I I have yeah. I have friends yeah, but, that like I haven't deleted just because I I, I want to see what these people think. That that literally they just say the most outrageous things ever. But you can't. You you got to change. Like you said, you kind of said it. You got to change the grassroots people first. Then eventually we'll have representatives that are that are more reasonable. The th- the issue is, I I want to tell you this. The issue is, I I, I agree with you, probably for the most part. But the, the to say I'm right. Look at look good. at look. No no no. no I, because I won't say that you're right because you're not totally right. <laughs> But the realistic thing... This is stressing thing, me out. It's okay. It's fun. It's fun. We're having fun here. All right. The, the realistic thing here is that... We are look at the polls. No, no, no. Look at the polls. Look at the polls. What What is in favor... Medicare for all, over 70%. Uh, basic background checks, over 90%. Over m- the majority of NRA members are in favor of it. Over 50% of Republicans are in favor of a basic background check for guns. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it hasn't passed. You know why? Because of money in politics, because of the fact that like these 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 Republican 
representatives are just they're hacks they're not they're not they, they're not representatives calling them representatives is a joke and you shouldn't call them representatives and you, and you should call them out every time they vote against it but that's the thing is it's just it, it's not rep it, sorry I, i'm kind of it, it messes with me a little bit because i can hear my voice in the background anyway but like it, it, it's it is, just when i'm leaning over can you hear it now i yeah i can still hear it huh it's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut. It, I'm gonna cut it out in post, so it doesn't matter. But the thing <laughs> is, is like you can't rely on these these sorts of like Republican, especially Republican representatives. I I, I don't know any sort of I, ideology that they you could say that they have like a moral founding on. I, w I would like to hear an argument because like I've I've seen these people post things like. Oh, uh, like healthcare. Like, what if, like, what if you can't choose your healthcare anymore? And it's just like, it, it, it like, I, I don't know. I, I, I would really, I, I like to, I would like to hear one issue where it's just like, uh, okay, yeah, I think there's an argument there because I, I haven't heard almost any. I mean, uh, when we talk about like foreign policy, we can have an argument, but in, in terms of internal policy in the United States. I, I think there needs to be Medi Medicare for all. I think there needs to be a lot, a lot more like social programs. I think there's need to be a lot more regulation. I, I, I don't really see like some sort of argument there. So how do you change it? I think that it has to be, yeah, it has to be on a, uh, of course, like like grassroots. you were talking so about, it exactly has to be like grassroots. Yeah, 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 it has to be grassroots. But I don't, <laughs> I don't think at the same point, like when you're talking about like, you, you can at the same point at the same time. When you're when you're pushing the grassroots things, say like, yeah, well, like you have some points. You need to say like, no, you like there are no points there. There you don't have any points. Like Tucker Carlson, this racist piece of garbage, doesn't have any points. Like he's not smart. Like you can't the, you can't defend that guy. He's a white I want nationalist. To see what what their ratings are. You know, have they dropped or they? It seems like. You know, I hear. I mean, everything for me is a feel, you know. So, what do, what do you mean? What do you mean in, in terms that, of in terms of like? Are you talking about in terms of Fox News? Yeah, like I. Oh, it's it's it it's like the, 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 the norm. The median you know. age of the people that watch Fox News is like 70, 80, 80 years old. Yeah, so joke. I, they're either dying off or people are getting wise because I, you know, like I see it less in motel lobbies. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear people talking about it less. Um, I'd like to see the ratings because I, it's, I think, it's dying you know, off. But the the issue is that that CNN is like as much as CNN is definitely better. It's not that much better. Yeah. And and why you have the because all of these people are are establishment hacks. Like they're they they they're sycophants for these establishment things. Like you have like like uh, even Ari like my good good friend like really like defends like will defend like wolf blitzer and things like that and like i really have a lot of problems with him because i feel like he carries water for these establishment people and he will just keep going oh well you know like yeah trump is terrible but like you know like r other rich people and it's just like no 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 these these rich people that have like rigged the system against us and like basically have created an oligarchy in the united states these are the people that are the problem so be, I want to know. Answer. I want to know how I can create a like a a landslide um, buying of my book overseas somehow. <laughs> a landslide? What? A landslide? I think if too many people read my book in the United States, then people will think I'm a heretic. And who cares, man? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so but, what? But then, and nobody, you know. I don't know. I, what what I would what I would say is like uh I mean I on this on this podcast specifically I will promote your book. I'll I'll put it on there but we don't have that many foreign followers. Like I have probably 30 40% foreign followers but uh, I mean I'll promote it and I'll I'll encourage people to read it but it's gonna yeah. be the, the, it's gonna be what it is. I mean, like, and if people think you're a heretic, then I think that maybe that might be good. Maybe you're. It doing... might. Be, it could. It could be good, and that's part of the issue. Is that like, if you're gonna call, if you're gonna just call someone a heretic because of some ideas that they have spouse, 
then and you're not going to have a conversation with them, then maybe you're the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Parich. It was like my yeah. friend that I was interviewing on my podcast today, he had a new book out, and he was like, you know, this book is not the answer. This book is to start the conversation. So I that's kind of what I hope, is that it invokes some conversation. I mean, yeah, and and that's what it sh- and that's what it should do, and I hope I I think that's probably what it will do in a lot of cases. But that's the thing is, you 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 guys are in such a small bubble that the people immediately around you that's what it's gonna be is they're gonna either be completely turned off to it because they're gonna say like this challenges my belief system and so I'm gonna get defensive or they're gonna be like yeah let's have a let's let's talk about it and they'll probably generally agree with you. Yeah. So you know, mom is doing doing benefits right now for Jackson, our grandson. Your okay. your your nephew. Your nephew. My nephew. Yeah. In case you haven't heard of him. You have. Jackson so, yeah, who, who is this Jackson? Who is this Jackson, Jackson guy JB? you speak of? JB. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's his name. <laughs> Say, hey, can you send me a link? I'll. I need to like post all. I'll, I'll post. Dad's book. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I mean, to do it. I guess I can send it to you on Facebook Messenger. My book yeah, doesn't have any me, promotional. Like, probably won't have promotional stuff till after April fifteenth when they put this other one out. Sorry, right. I'll just I'll share it twice. Maybe I'm, gonna, it'll, I'm gonna find the link right now and Facebook message it to you. Maybe I'll get a cover or something pretty soon. We're not going to be able to talk forever today, or I can't. Mom could keep talking, but i got to take a nap before I go to work. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, like, I, yeah, people should, people should read that book, because I, I'm, I did the, what is it, what is that called, the, the, epi- after, the after epilogue, log, epilogue, after a log, after yeah. a log, is epil- I don't know, yeah. I, that I was the, the, the part that I was, probably one of the most proud things of the book was that, um, what you wrote and what mom wrote at the end. You know, I was probably in conjunction at, with the foreword, uh-huh. you know, from Dr. Paul. You know, those... And all of the recommendations were really not about the book. You know, they weren't, mm-hmm. this is the greatest book ever written. They were, you know, we kind of appreciate Carl's journey. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's, it's, it's the idea, yeah. The yeah, because that's, that's what I hope about the book is that we... We talk about um, not whether I agree with his beliefs, but you know, can I appreciate the journey that he's on? You know, and that's the that's the deal. Yeah, right? I mean, as a, that's the yeah, that's the issue that it comes down to, and I think that's uh, that's why I appreciated it, I guess, so much. Is I mean, obviously, it, it incor- incorporates my. I guess journey for a lack of a better word, but um, so so it's it's more interesting to me. But it's just like yeah, that these these are the sort of discussions that people should have, be having. I mean, mm-hmm. while I would probably rank politics slightly above some of like the the I don't know maybe equal to philosophical discussions, but maybe slightly below, or I would rank politics slightly above, uh, like spiritual discussions sometimes in the U.S. because we should live in a, a, a society that's, that's above, like, religion and things like that. Like, because of the fact that religion is so endemically, like, tied into the fact, like, the, the fibers of, of the being of, of the United States, then these are this sort of discussions that we should be having. Yeah. I would, I'd rather talk about spirituality than religion, but, um, yeah, I mean, for most people that like getting into splitting hairs, cause most of those people couldn't probably couldn't define either of those things. They would yeah. say like, yeah. So, but I, I agree with you. I would, I would say or I even would separate most could not separate their religion from their patriotism or nationalism. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So, they would say, yeah. And, and, I, okay to to your point like connect like the the connection between like um patriotism nationalism christianity and and israel the state of israel 
Look at the look at the things that have been coming out against Ilhan Omar. I wrote I wrote an article about it recently, and Ari has written multiple articles about uh, being a uh, like you know like from a Jewish perspective about like what does this mean to be like in favor of like the Jewish quote unquote Jewish state, which is like basically a right wing like fascist government. So I, I, I don't want to mischaracterize his, like, argument, but, like, it's like, yeah, like, w- w- so what does that mean? Like, it, it, so if you're if you're a Christian, and, and it, it, it frustrates me to no end because it's like these fundamentalist Christians are in favor of, like, supporting Israel, this right-wing, fa- like, Israel, I won't, I won't keep saying fascist, but this right-wing Israeli gov- government they're in favor of the Netanyahu, Netanyahu government, but at the same time, like they believe that like every Jew per every Jewish person will die and like go to hell, basically. Hey, speaking of that, in Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Look up our friend Mercy Aiken. Okay, why? Um, she has a lot of insight into that stuff. She occasionally pu- publishes some stuff. Mm. about you know she lives in Bethlehem so oh, I think okay. or she's at Bethlehem University or something like that but she um, definitely has a lot of insight into you know kind of here's really what's going on um, it's just a really good source mm. um, and kind of speaking truth to, to some things sometimes um, mm. But she's a friend of mine on Facebook. I'm, are she yeah, she's yours? my friend too. Mercy Aiken, A I K E N. Her thing okay. says she's from Grand Canyon Village, Arizona, but she's she lives over there. I know too many people there from Arizona. Ari is also from Arizona. So mm-hmm. Yeah, too many people. But where's, anyway, like, where's um, uh, Abby uh-huh. from? Where Abby is from? Young Taiwan? man. Young May Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Taiwanese, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the the Israeli lobby is uh, a little bit ridiculous. So yeah, I I don't know. I I don't know. We can have we can have a discussion maybe at some point about what's going on in Israel and uh, Ari is like really. really knowledgeable about these things but um i'm not that well informed it's but just like my views have changed which over is over the years which is good but it's like they literally kill like medical personnel and jur- journalists all the time it's it, it, yeah. it, so so to call so to just say like israel is right palestine is wrong is is, is wrong headed and yeah. and I, I I have a lot of pro- basically what where I would come out in a general sense is the Palestinian leadership is stupid and the Israeli leadership is stupid. Netanyahu is a right wing f- idiot. Like he's stupid, and also the Palestinian leadership is also stupid. Like they're both old right wing people, and they're both stupid, and they don't they're not doing anything to forward the dialogue between the two countries. And yeah, so uh, I don't know. Hey man, on a good note, I've been able to not have pants on (laughs) all day today. It's two o'clock. It's one thirty in the afternoon, and I still haven't had pants on. That's a successful Saturday morning in Taiwan. We would say, "Well, shemu." I'm I'm jealous. Yeah. (laughs) I know. Shimmel, uh, I, I've, I, I, I guess I, I've worn sweatpants all day. I went to work in sweatpants, so I'm doing nice. all right. I'm not doing terrible for myself, but yeah. I, I mean, not having pants on at all is, is better. Well, <laughs> I mean, not. Well, I have pajamas on, but I haven't it's, put on. I haven't changed clothes yet. That's a success. That's, that's still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, not yeah. doing too bad for yourself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, do you have more to talk about, Laura? No, but I think we should do a podcast. You and me and Abby. 
All like, right, yeah. And it can, it can be your Abby and our, my Abby, too, because I don't think we've had your sister on this, on a podcast with you either. I mean, you and Lily have done a podcast, and anyway. Uh, I don't we know. Have get, we, have to get, we have to get Abby to talk more, but, yeah, we can, yeah, we can it, do what we can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we'll have to schedule something. Bring, send me those... Uh, links to the articles or the article that you wrote on the teacher strike I think that would be something that would be interesting to discuss I think you guys could do a brainstorming session on how to market my book oh my gosh send me <laughs> send me the, <laughs> your, your book information because I'll, I'll put it on the, the, the um, I'll probably pod, like post this article or this article this podcast by maybe Monday or something so Send send me the links to the article and stuff, and Ma, we'll we'll we can get Abby or Lily is she's coming to your house? Well, she's coming here and she's gonna like spend the night, but then she's gonna go visit a friend in Kansas City who's she had her baby at twenty eight weeks, so her baby's in the NICU. So oh, Lily's okay. Lily's gonna go down there and give some moral support, and you know that means I have to watch Jackson. I make such so sacrifices. Yeah. I make so, so many sacrifices you. for you my children. So much. <laughs> <laughs> you hate it so it much. It never it's be ends. So tough for you. The yeah, sacrifices yeah. I make. Yeah, watching oh, well. cute babies is. So I know. Rough. It. And just oh, sit on the couch goodness. and just snuggle all that time and do nothing else. <laughs> but I will do it. I will it's do like it for her. One thirty in the morning there, right? Good for you. Yeah, no, it's like two thirty in the morning in Taiwan. Two thirty. Mom is correct. Mom. Is I correct. keep up. It is two thirty-two right now in the morning. That's here. ridiculous. <laughs> so if I said anything stupid, I'm gonna blame it on the time. <laughs> there you go. If it were here on a weekday, that would be like almost time for me to get up. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I get up at four. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Stop it doing is, that, man. It's nuts. He's got to be to work by six, though, so. Yeah, and it takes an That's hour to get stupid. there. That's stupid. <laughs> That's stupid. You need to stop doing that. <laughs> well, the good thing is the floodwaters receded a little bit, so it doesn't take me an hour and a half to get there right. anymore. Yeah, so, yeah, again, what I would I would say is, yeah, the... The the ridiculous that's the the flooding in the Midwest people should be paying attention to especially yeah. if they're especially if people are are, are saying like uh, you know paying attention to like climate change like that mm-hmm. absurd they're saying it's it just keeps I mean I know some friends of ours and you you would know them too but they're like not even moving back into their home they're like we're gonna find someplace else to live because each time there's a flood it's Mm -hmm. even more devastating than the last one yeah i mean and even if it's not like i mean of course like you know climate change is not uh, it's not necessarily like persistently worse and in a lot of cases it is but um yeah it's it's like the flooding that happened in the in you in missouri and nebraska is like mind-boggling it's so, bad it's crazy like i-29 north in hamburg iowa is like trash like there's literally sections of i-29 that are gone yeah so what i would say is people if people think that is bad there are literally going to be wars over water soon like, yeah like the middle like like the okay if, for any for the one right wing listener that may be listening to our podcast, Dad, the, just you kidding. you, th- <laughs> <laughs> you think you, you, I know I know you 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 think you think there's an issue right now with like Middle East in, like immigration right now? There literally the Middle East is going to be unlivable in like a couple years. Like there people are not going to be able to live there. Every single person is going to immigrate to the U.S. or to Europe. It's going to be a crisis, like a legitimate crisis. So, mm. if you don't, if you if you are a racist, I'm going to say, if you're a racist piece of shit, get like you need to care about like climate change. 
And so yeah. get on that. Get on it now. If you want to be a racist, like, then care about climate change and, like, make something happen and, like, care about renew, like, vote for renewable energy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like, buckle up because, like, we're going to be dealing with that, like, re- like for real instead of, like, a joke. Like, we're not going to be ex- accepting, like, 10,000 10, immigrants to the U.S., like, from the Middle East. We're going to be accepting, like, millions. So let's strap yeah. up and, like, let's get ready. So Right. Yeah. yeah. The guy from Pakistan wanted to translate my book today. I said, That's well, pretty you should cool. probably read it. It's not even out yet. <laughs> he said, I would. I will. I don't know. <laughs> It was weird. Are you sure that's not like like some like like a uh, one of those like email scams where they're just like, oh, if you send me like a thousand dollars, like I'll send you ten million dollars. Well, like- here's what happens: like, like if it, people look for pastors or something, you know, on the internet, and then uh-huh. like I'll get a, um, a friend request from somebody in Africa, mm-hmm. you know, or Pakistan or whatever. And they'll make friends with me, and then they'll just go, "Hi, Mr. Carl," you know, or whatever. And yeah. then they eventually they ask me for money. So I, yeah, the, it's just like a, a a Kenyan like prince scam. Yeah. So I started, so I started like accepting their friend request, and mm. then before they can send me anything, I send them a link to Carl's coaching and say. Uh, if you'd like to get to know me better, because that's what they always say in the beginning, whether it's a, you know, mm-hmm. nude woman scam or, <laughs> a, or a, you know, overseas money scam or whatever. They're, How are you? And I just want to be friends with you. And I want to make, you know, so before they can do that, I just send them a link to Carl's coaching. So if you want to get to know me, this is the best way. Yeah. And I don't have any money. So get it. <laughs> <laughs> or or I say, uh, what can I do for you right up front? So it kind of disarms them a little bit. But anyway, I hate to just you know, you always have the thought in the back of your mind, what if you, you know, dismiss somebody that was, you know, that you really yeah. could have helped, or yeah, 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 yeah. might just needed and some how, encouragement. Yeah, exactly. How could I have made a difference as, yeah. as opposed to yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I just I don't know. It's it's a hard I, balance. I think yeah, I think that's like that's it's it's probably a good route to take. Maybe yeah, it, as opposed to probably the route I take, which um because like um. Ari and I have had this conversation before about like uh, Chinese trolls, and uh, there's probably more ground to cover, and we'll probably have this discussion further. Um, it will probably be uh, protracted further on on the podcast, but like, oh, there's so many so many trolls from China that like sometimes I'm just like you're you're just dumb, like you're so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, it's 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 difficult because it's like oh they reach out to you and then but then sometimes it's like oh well I have literally like a whole week of like sending like like hundreds hundreds of messages and being like oh so what do you think about your government what do you think about your government what do you think about your government and they're just like democracy is a cult democracy is a cult democracy is a cult and I'm just like <laughs> yeah but like what do you think about the authoritarian government you live under. And they're just like, democracy is a cult. And you're just like, (laughs) okay, so like you're a joke. But yeah, but there's that, there's the occasional time where it's just like, what do you think about your government? And they're like, yeah, my government's not that great. And you're like, oh, this is cool. (laughs) Like, yeah, we're having a discussion. Like, yeah. Yeah. It happens occasionally. It's tough. (laughs) It's tough. And I, I, I think, I think the, the comparison between, um, living in, Northwest Missouri and uh, trying to have like a discussion about uh, Christianity and and living in Taiwan versus mainland authoritarian China and having tra- trying to have a conversation about democracy is pretty comparable. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, I'll let I'll let you guys go. We'll we, okay. we yeah we got to have another podcast, Mom. I mean, if a. Uh, I don't know when when Abby's gonna have time. We can. I don't know. She works nights, and I think her schedule's never really set. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. So. Well, we get we get. I mean, even if uh, if you can do on a mic and Abby can do on her phone, I don't okay. care. Like, like if you listen, if you guys listen to the last podcast, like, like Seth literally recorded on like a an iPad. Basically. Oh, did he really? Yeah, I listened like to a, it. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was. Oh, really I didn't bad. think it was bad. It didn't it sound was, bad to me. I spent like four, five hours editing that podcast. Oh, really? It was bad. It was really, really bad. <laughs> but it's okay. Like we had fun, and the next time we record the podcast, we learned from that, and we're gonna yeah. make it better. And like, yeah, he's gonna like whatever, what whatever the issue was, like putting in headphones or whatever it was, will like make it better. So. It's, it's okay. We're having discussions, and that's the main point that of this good. podcast. Is like let's let's discuss yep. things. 